It's a beautiful day to do the Qatar's guide. Damn it! Your safest grounded move that can set up kills with end light recovery. If you miss it, you can easily cover yourself with another move or you can get out of the way when you feel unsafe. And it's a good move to zone your opponent and catch spot dodges, dashing in opponents and works as a punish tool. It's a really good approach option on the ground. It's your main string starter and damage build because it leads into your two most basic combos. It's especially useful on the edge to set up gimps and it can be a good move to follow up with a signature when you're looking to knock out your opponent early. It's your main anti-air move, slightly riskier than end light since you do a little jump off the ground. It's super important for the half pipe string which we'll talk about in a little bit and it's useful to safely follow up out of end light without committing as much as using end light recovery if you want to do that too. The holy grail of the Katars kit is Katars Nair and that's because it's the jack of all trades. You can use it to approach from the air, set up gimps with it, knock people off stage with it and it's also an amazing string tool and you know 11 damage per hit but that damage is going to add up a lot pretty solid move that i don't really use on stage unless i'm playing against lance in that case i'll do dash jump sarah as an approach option occasionally because you, you can immediately land and do delight if you whiff it off stage though it's really solid for hitting your opponent off of the wall gimping them early catching recoveries all that good stuff so down air has two forms the aerial one and the grounded one the grounded one is where you touch the ground and the aerial one has done it like two jump heights high or something like that it's a good approach option and it'll get over some stuff it's unexpected you know useful but grounded there is just better overall just because you get the delight true combo which is pretty much one of your bread and butter combos that you want to be setting up into constantly and also it can beat out horizontal options every single time so if someone approaches you with a lance side light you can just jump there and beat it out every single time i also sometimes like to catch my opponent with dash jump there as they're recovering back onto the stage it's really solid sometimes you can catch them off guard with it but it's also really risky you can also dare at the bottom of the wall to hit your opponent into a sare which can set up for early gimps it's absolutely insane if you can actually hit it i don't use it enough i need to use it more you should use it your only way to kill off the top of the stage reliably it's got a lot of priorities so you can beat out most ground pounds with it if you use its angle to your advantage you should wait to use it until you can hit your opponent and get the chase dodge back to stage and like dare it has the ability to reverse an offstage situation if you hit it on the wall it's just your typical ground pound it's not really the greatest move at all in the kit in fact i think it's the worst move in the kit it's really really underwhelming but now it has the true combo gc d light and sometimes recovery but it's not that good where you see someone that you know and they ask you how you are and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine but you just can't get into it because they would never understand be careful when you use it off stage because you commit to a lot of distance when you use it but it's really useful to set up a gimp or to confirm kills Pretty much every string will flow into side light at some point and you should be using it because it's your main setup tool. I prefer to use side light to delight more because your opponent has less time to think about how to escape because delight is much quicker than end light. End light is harder for your opponent to land from especially if you've been using end light to delight so you should use that in situations where you want to maintain stage control or you're on the edge of the stage. The half pipe string you need a good controller or a keyboard that doesn't ghost on you. In 2016 I wasn't able to do it consistently because I had a bad keyboard. The same case could be for you if you can't hit it. One tip is depending on how you hit the delight you may have to turn around or just continue doing delight dare or recovery and once you've hit the delight dare don't dash or anything just delight dare delight dare delight dare. Also never underestimate the usefulness of Qatar's nair that move like I said is the jack of all trades and for good reason you can basically do anything out of guitar snare and i'll show you a bunch of different things you can do right now Qatar's struggle if your opponent is able to efficiently mix up between dodging, fast falling, jumping, and wake ups on hit. One way to make sure your opponent knows to dodge is by starting off a game with safe extensions of strings. 
My favorite way to do this is with end light to d light because by doing that, I'm telling my opponent to dodge out of end light or get hit. So now they know they risk getting hit if they do anything other than dodge. Using a dodge requires your opponent to commit a lot to what they're about to do, and if you catch it, then you can get a lot of damage in the form of a full punish. The reason you do this is so that you know that they're going to dodge and not wake up or anything so you can safely and confidently extend your strings. Alright, next section. To be able to consistently recognize when to go off stage and when to just take an edge guard is probably the number one skill that you can learn. It all depends on your opponent's weapons, their current movement options, do they have something that could easily reverse the offstage situation like hammer recovery, gauntlets, nair to ground pound, or nyx blasters and sig? Are they actually capable of reversing you? Can you make them burn a dodge? Or can you put them into a worse spot while they're recovering back to the wall or to the stage? Most of the time, if they're in a good position on the wall with their dodge intact, I will only threaten them by edge guarding. And if you get a good setup on them on the edge, then you can go into offstage and go for a kill. But other than that, make sure you're doing it safely so you don't accidentally throw a lead or get yourself more behind. To help you in later offstage situations, you should be collecting information about how your opponent reacts when you walk offstage or when you walk a little bit closer to the edge. Your opponent will react in some way, whether that's distancing themselves from you more or just jumping up to immediately attack you, you can remember that for next time and be one step ahead of them for when you find yourself in another offstage situation. You should learn how to use the wall to your advantage. For example, you can quickly touch the wall and get off to avoid ground pounds and then Sare punish with guitars to reverse an offstage situation. Nair on the wall to have a hitbox out to cover yourself or to hit your opponent downwards, or you can use it as a bait. Your opponent knows you need to touch the wall when you're off stage, so you can bait out a punish from your opponent faking going towards the wall and at the last moment dodging and punishing. So off stage, your opponent can either go high directly onto the stage or low onto the wall. If you know they're going low, then they'll either go for the wall touch immediately or try to bait you into whiffing so they can go up for free. You should get good at counting your opponent's options to know if they have to come up immediately or can stall you out for a moment longer, and that will help you make better decisions. Offstage ground pound is mainly for confirming kills, so like if your opponent dodges into the wall, just ground pound them and just destroy them. You can also do chase dodge down nair to confirm kills if they're going to jump immediately out of your ground pound. It's also good for catching recoveries, and if you ever can, make sure that you're ground pounding close to the wall because it resets your jumps and your recovery. Nair requires less commitment, it's good for moving to the wall so you can have a hitbox out while you wall touch, instant jump Nair to catch recoveries and jumps is also really useful and something I do all the time. And finally, Sair is for when your opponent has no options left and you want to spike them, or when they're on the wall. It's also really good for catching recoveries, you don't really have to get stacked like you do with Katars in there, but Ground Pound in my opinion is better if you can confirm it. Obviously each recovery is different and you should learn where each one goes, how high they go and where they hit so you can properly punish them with Nair, Sair, or Ground Pound. And like I said, you want to preemptively use Jump Nair to catch recoveries and jumps, and you should get used to sometimes jumping and instantly using moves off stage to catch jumps. This goes for any weapon except it's not always jump there, like on sword for example you jump there instead. Learning how to play the edge is something I'll cover in another video, but it's super important to be able to know how the edge influences your opponent's decisions, and this knowledge can get you crazy zero to deaths off of just one dodge read. Ragnar and Asuri are both the best because of their neutral signatures which make you 10 times more dangerous offstage than while edgeguarding. You'll find that with Ragnar's even stats he doesn't need a stance, and on Asuri you should definitely be running strength stance to boost your killing power. But against Hammer and Axe you can definitely run defense stance, making it so you die 10 to 20 damage later from some kill setups on Hammer and Axe, so if you think that's worth it, go for it. Lucian's third because his sigs are all very well rounded, he doesn't really have a bad one on guitars, and D sig is insane for gimps. He's a bit worse because of three attacks, so use the attack stance. And when you're killing with him, make sure to hit your side sigs, otherwise you're gonna have a tough time. Sentinel's overall solid, his defense is good, but the lower decks could throw some people off. This is editing wrenched, use attack stance, don't use uh, deck stance, yeah that sucks. D-Sig is also a very good edge guard option because it's quick and can spike your opponent if you hit the bottom of it. And his N-Sig is cracked. N-Light N-Sig? Broken! N-Sig in general? Broken also. 
Ember would be better, but her defense hinders her. Along with Katar's Ensig being pretty difficult to use properly and basically being useless. Side Sig and Down Sig are insanely good signatures with mix up potential between the two of them. And you can backdash the D Sig, you can dash forward D Sig, you can just D Sig, you know, yes. The reason she's so low though is because both of those signatures serve a similar purpose and her N Sig is useless. You're gonna be surprised that Caspian's actually here. Caspian was actually gonna be the bottom of this list before I switched a few legends around. But I think I've been a bit too hard on this poor guy. Plus, Gauntlet's got buffed, so you know. They, I mean, it's not a Gauntlet's guide, but you know, he's good. Compared to the legend I listed already, he's pretty underwhelming. But compared to Lin Fei and Queen Nai, he's pretty clean, not gonna lie. Katara's side sig and end sig are legitimately useful and can add counters to situations other Katara's legends don't have, especially people directly above you trying to bait out your delight. D sig is also pretty useful for edge guarding every now and then, as long as you don't do it predictably. I hope this makes your day alters. Lin Fei is a pretty okay character. Her attack is really low, like Lucian, but her signatures also have a bit of trouble killing. So, you know. Her end sig hitbox is deceiving and it can kill. Side sig is pretty quick, so it's a good approach option sometimes, but it doesn't really kill. D sig can spike your opponent really hard out of nowhere sometimes, which is her one strength on Katars, but unfortunately Ragnar has a straight up better version of the signature where you don't end up off stage if you miss. She can be unexpectedly good sometimes, but typically you don't play her for the Katars, you play her for the Ken. Queen Nai is really slow and her signatures are also really slow and she's an outdated character. Foda would be ashamed of where Queen Nai is on this list and it's honestly sad how far she's fallen since 2015? 2015? Yeah, I think 2015. When Brahala looked like this. Katars aren't a meta weapon in 2v2, and for pretty good reason. It's pretty difficult to reliably team combo with a Katars player, and to make matters worse, your enemy always has a teammate to help get them out of your string. With just stray hits and no strings or team combos, you're set up to lose with the low damage done, but if you're a true maniac, there are a couple ways you can effectively use Katars in 2s. First off, to team combo with Katars, your best options are falling there, Enlight, or a Signature. I like Asurian 2s because her D-Sig works really well to hit them back to your teammate. For signatures that don't hit them back, use them to kill instead. Katars aren't an amazing weapon for 2s. Wouldn't recommend it, but you can still do it. I won't stop you. Hey, so, you know, thank you for watching the video. Hopefully you learned something. I tried to make it up to expectations for you guys, but if you have any more questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment and I'll make sure to answer. I'm moving a little bit towards hopefully regular content, including streams at twitch.tv slash wrench, by the way, you should go over there and follow. If you like this video, that's good. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.